Hi everyone, this is Mr. Trevor. Today we are going to start learning about acrylic painting. And um, so before we start, we need to get a few things in order. So there are certain materials that you will need for um, these exercises and uh, painting assignments. So uh, first of all, we will have to have a set of acrylic paints. So some of you would have uh, this brand. Okay, some of you would have this. Both are fine. Okay, so you can uh, use either one whichever you have. Uh, next, we will need to have a palette. Okay, so the palette is made up of um, six big reservoirs and then a few, um, seven of the smaller reservoirs in the center here. Okay, so you're going to make use of that to contain and squeeze out your paints. Next, we need to have a container of water. Okay, typically I'll fill it out about half. Okay, uh, any random water container is fine. You can use a, you know, reuse some plastic containers or it can be a glass one I, uh, also. Uh, next, you also need to have a towel or a piece of cloth that uh, you can use to clean or dry your brushes. So um, with regard to brushes, you should have two different sets of uh, brushes. Okay, so we have the round tip brush uh, that is quite, not so quite um, rounded at the tips, but uh, maybe if it's rounded, if you look at it at this perspective, okay, but uh, they are mainly very pointed tips for, for you to uh, utilize them to um, paint the small details, uh, paint lines for you to do quick sketches with these brushes. And of course, uh, it comes with uh, in three different sizes. Okay, over here, uh, if you bought the standard set, you should have four, eight, and twelve. Uh, if you don't have all three, it's fine. Don't worry. Just make use with uh, or make use of with what you have. Okay. Next, uh, we have a set of uh, round tip brushes. Okay. So also come in th um, three different sizes: four, eight, and twelve. Okay. So the uh, flat tip brushes are kind of um, square. In the in the tips okay so these are good for painting um, large areas bigger surface areas and uh, yeah they can be good for blending um, straight lines or so okay so um, these brushes are new so you will probably need to uh, wet them a little bit with the water before the bristles okay this little hairs here are also called bristles uh, before all these bristles become softened okay so over here you see that there is a size 8 one is uh, not so soft so you need to wet them to soften the bristles okay so all right uh, so brushes aside okay you can just put them aside first uh, you will need to have this worksheet that were given out that was given out earlier on okay uh, that's printed on the drawing block all right so uh, if you didn't receive this you should try to take out a piece of blank drawing block that's about a4 size Okay, if you do not have drawing block at home, you can use any blank piece of paper, uh, just that the paper might be a little bit thinner and might not be able to take a uh, wet medium so well, so you might be, you might crumple a little bit. Okay, so before we begin, um, we will choose one set of paints. Okay, so over here, I will probably be using this set most of the time. Okay, so just take out the paints. Now, um, some of you might find that um, the paints are new. Um, so, in order for you to take out the paints, okay, right, it's now still sealed. Okay, you can see that it, it, you can't squeeze out anything, right? So, at the tip of the cover of this cap here, okay, open up the cap, there is a needle in the center there, okay, just flip, just flip the cap over, okay, to use the needle inside there to poke and open uh, to poke open this tube of paint okay so once you poke it through the tube of paint should be um, accessible okay so uh, for this exercise let's try to pick out um, for this uh, for this brand uh, we will take out this primary cyan color okay um, if you are using the omni set um, there is no need to poke open the um, tube of paints if you are using this omni set you can pick up this um, blue shade okay this shade of blue that you can use um, for this, you won't have to uh, poke open any of uh, the paint, so it should be usable. Okay. Now, um, so regarding the palette, okay, like I mentioned before, there are um, the smaller reservoirs here and the bigger ones. Okay, so typically we will squeeze out the some bit of paint. Okay, maybe about a five cents sized uh, block of paint. 
uh, in one of the middle smaller reservoirs here okay so set it aside and then cap back your acrylic pin now um, for us to be using the brushes okay um, let's talk about how you should be holding the brushes first okay you should uh, like your pencils, uh, previously I taught you before, uh, th you should be holding your pencils and brushes with only three fingers. Okay, you just need the middle finger, the uh, index finger, and your thumb. So these three fingers can control um, all your movements and your painting or your drawing if you are using um, pencils. Okay, so like mentioned before, the brushes are still very stiff right here. Okay, um, you just soak it into the water okay and try to brush it against the bottom of the water container once it's once it's gotten wet and absorbed some water it should become soft okay so dry it a little bit on uh, the cloth so you see it has already uh, softened so we can bend it here and there and it's more flexible okay so for this exercise what we need to try to do and achieve is uh, to paint lines of different thickness and you may use different size brushes to achieve uh, different thickness you should also observe the thickness and wetness of the paints. Um, observe and ask yourself how wet should the paints be on the brush in order to maintain a consistently thick and rich color throughout the line from start to end. Okay, so um, for acrylic paints, unlike watercolor or poster colors that you might have been using in primary school, um, the paints have to be uh, relatively thick okay, and not so diluted with water. Okay, I'm going to show you um, on my rough piece of paper what I mean by too thin and too diluted. Okay, so on my rough piece of paper, okay, so on Okay, so on my rough piece of paper, okay, so on my rough piece of paper, I'm going to show you what I mean by um, too diluted, okay? So using the um, round tip brush, I'm using a 12, size 12 brush. Uh, what I mean by too watery will be um, when you paint the line like that, okay, and uh, you can see through the paints, you can see through the paints until like uh, you can see what's underneath the paint and you can see through onto the uh, drawing block. So this is definitely too um, thin and too diluted. This is more like a watercolor technique, which is not um, correct when we are using acrylic paint. Okay, so how thick should it be? Um, acrylic, acrylic paints, you must use it rather thickly. So when I pick up a little bit of paints, um, it should be about this thick. Okay, it coats the entire tip of the brush. Okay, um, glistening, kind of looking rather wet, quite glossy. Okay, so when you paint it, it should be nice and thick. And it shouldn't be see, um, seeing through the paints. Okay, so when you spread it out a little bit more, it gets thinner, then you can see it through. But it should be nice, solid, and thick. Okay, true to the um, richness of the color itself. Okay, so it should be nice and deep. Okay, so if I bring it closer to the camera, it should be about this thickness. Okay, so it's rather wet, rather thick, and uh, very glossy, deep and rich in color. Okay, so um, when we move on to the actual exercise on the templated um, worksheet, your painting should be very thick like that. Okay, so if you can see, it's rather thick, very rich in color, and not like that. Okay, I repeat, not like that when you put in a lot of water, and then you can see through okay, the paint itself onto the drawing block. Okay. So I'm going to rinse my brush. So when I'm rinsing my brush, I brush it at the bottom of the water container. Okay, according to the flow and direction of the bristles itself so that you don't spoil the brush. 
Okay, so I'm going to set this rough paper aside and go back to the worksheet. Now, um, so for the first section, we're going to use um, the round tip brush, okay, like what I was using just now to create um, nice solid lines, okay. So the brush should be relatively wet, okay, but not dripping wet. So that's why we need, after we rinse the brushes, you need to use the rag, okay, to kind of um, dry and get off excess water. Okay, so try to brush it. Okay, when you rinse it, the excess water, just briefly dry it with the cloth. Okay, then, okay, from, since we are using only one color, okay, we are not missing color, so you can actually just directly take the paint from the center reservoir here. Okay, so just briefly coat this brush, the tip of the brush with a nice layer nice coat of paint also by now your brush your um, paint shouldn't be too dry yet okay so from left to right okay depending on your left hander or right hander uh, I'm right hander so I'm just painting be painting from uh, left to right okay try, try to draw uh, I mean paint lines from left to right okay just as per our exercises for pencil we are drawing uh, creating straight lines okay so that was one line okay the paint was not too consistent if you can see okay I'll bring it up here okay it's one straight line but of course uh, there's a uh, differing thickness of the paint okay so I decided maybe I should grab more paints okay a little bit more so that I can paint maybe something more consistent throughout the line okay left to right okay so you'll notice that the thickness it has also differed because I press a little bit harder when you press a little bit harder okay um, the brush will bend and it kind of spreads the bristles will spread out a little bit more such that there's a larger surface area covered when it touches the paper so that's how you can achieve thicker lines okay so press a little bit harder okay so you see the paint will start to um, get thinner to towards the end of the line okay so you can see uh, the paint was wet enough to be having a rather solid line but then um, it's just that uh, it might be, have gotten a little bit thinner towards the end okay so observe and see how much paint and how wet the paint should be when you are picking it out from the from the palette okay so we we'll just continue to practice painting straight lines solid lines that are dark enough and of course if you want you can switch brushes to use a smaller sized round tip brush this is the smallest one that I have in the in the set okay that is about uh, this is a size 4 okay so similarly rinse uh, rinse it soften the bristles first uh, dry it on the rag and we can pick up the paints again um, okay so there's a coat of paint on it and with the smallest size brush here that we have you should be able to create very thin lines okay now you see that the, the line is kind of uh, a bit it comes in blobs okay because the paints might have been too thick so um, there's too much paint on the brush tip so it becomes a little bit um, inconsistent in the distribution of the paint now so we try to uh, make it thinner okay less paint but which means when the brush can hold lesser paint you probably need to keep re, re um, taking more paint and it cannot sustain throughout the whole line so maybe you paint it halfway okay then take more paint and you continue okay so that you can continue to have a long nice line okay so feel free to explore within this area with your round tip brush um, within the available space you might also want to uh, create some curvy lines okay like what we have learned uh, using pencil uh, we can try to create some form of um, uh, this uh, line weight okay so from thick to thin okay within one line itself one stroke you can create 
a line that is uh, from thick okay to thin so we can also apply line weight here using brushes so when you press down harder the line will get thicker and you lift it up a little bit more the line gets thinner so I'm running out of paint here so uh, let's try that again I'll take more paint okay so um, you can apply hard press it down lift it up a bit lighter then then the, the, the line will get thinner okay so you can see maybe the paint is getting a little bit dry so we get a little bit more water thick to thin Okay, so you can try to do some curvy lines and apply a line weight to it. Right, so explore, but I should uh, continue to see clear lines, be it thick or thin or um, straight or curvy lines. So every line should be clearly uh, demonstrated so that I can take a look at your control of your round tip brush uh, in painting lines. Okay, so what we're trying to achieve in this exercise is for you to observe um, how much paint you should get to maintain a clean edge okay lines of clean edges so examples of non uh, clean edges will be all this okay the lines that are a little bit fuzzy not so clean not so clear okay so we need to learn to control the wetness of the paint to get clean edged lines Okay, it shouldn't be fuzzy, it shouldn't be furry, it shouldn't be um, blurry looking. Okay, so this will be the first exercise for today. Try to play around with the different size brushes uh, for round tip. Okay, so we're going to move on to the flat tip brush. Okay, for the second part of this worksheet. Okay, exercise number two. Um, because there's a limited space here, so I won't be using uh, the size 12 flat tip brush. I'll be using the uh, medium size, which is size 8 over here. So, um, same thing, this is a brand new brush, so uh, it's a little bit stiff. So, I'm going to soften it in the water, okay, let it be wet, and so that the bristles can be softened like that. Okay, so now, now that it is soft, okay, so try it a little bit. And uh, if you want to ch change the color of the paint, if you want, uh, you can, but uh, unless I'm not. I'll try to not waste the paint so I'm going to make use of whatever we have already squeezed out here if you want to change your color you want to have a variety of color for this worksheet you can okay so um, same thing using the flat tip brush you can paint a straight line okay so of course when you take a look here um, because the flat tip brush will spread the paint out um, across a larger surface area so the paint gets thin okay it gets thinned out very quickly so you might have to use um you can afford to take more paint on on the on the tip of the brush okay so very lightly let the uh, brush hover over the paper so that you're not pressing down too hard and uh, such that you are actually such that you will spread the paint too thin okay so i so both sides of the brushes uh will get the paint so when you're painting consider using both sides of the brush okay so it's like a piece of bread okay with kaya on both sides okay or maybe a knife that you try to spread the kaya over the bread so once one side um, has exhausted the paint you can turn okay rotate it around to continue painting from the other side using the, the paint on the other side of the brush all right so this is one solid line using the flat tip brush now the flat tip brush can uh, be used okay using this side so that you can have a nice thick line correct okay or you can flip it around and use the thin side to create thin lines okay this is how you're going to go about doing it okay we'll take more paint so we're using the, the thin part of this okay to, uh, to do it this way such that you can have a nice thin line as well Okay, so I'm still using the same brush, same size brush, size 8, right? Okay, but I can create both the thick line that we have created just now and also to create thin line by painting it horizontally like that. Okay, so I'm just using this shape of the brush to do it this way. 
okay um the other thing that you can try to do it will be to create different thickness based uh, on the size of the brush okay what you can do is kind of doing a zigzag line here but um like earlier on i was doing the thin line so i'm going to use this okay but not uh, turning not rotating the paper okay i can uh, not rotating not rotating the brush okay i can create this thin line but not rotating the brush i can do a zigzag line to have a thick line like that okay so the zigzag line okay thin thick thin thick thin and thick okay so you can create lines like that okay of course like i mentioned the uh, paint runs out very quickly due to the large surface area that the flat thick brush um, covers okay so we can get a little bit more paint okay so we can do the thin continue with the line the thin line okay thick thin thick thin thick thin thick okay so you can create a zigzag line of uh, thin and thick sections in, along the way okay so of course uh, when you do it in a curvy manner okay I'm just going to make use of the extra additional space that we have underneath here so I start off with thick and then when you move it you should be able to get different thickness along the way okay so now the paint is too watery I'm going to take more paint, okay, um, coat the tip of the brush with a relatively thick layer of paint and we can do this again, go over so that the color is solid, the line is solid and we have rather um, clean edges along on the outside of the lines, okay, so that is a clear straight, um, not straight, I mean a clear line, okay, so that's, it's not fuzzy, it's not hairy at the edges like that. So, for this whole exercise, okay, um, for this whole worksheet, your objective is to play around with the brushes and the paint. Okay, so with the brushes, you need to know how to control the brush, okay, using only three fingers, okay, to control and move your brush. Um, how you control the brushes to get straight lines and uniform lines, okay, and curvy lines and for also for you to experience and observe how thick how much paint you should be putting on to your brush and how wet the paints should be to maintain consistency throughout the line and to make it rich and solid okay so you can understand the nature of acrylic paint better okay it should all be consistent and this section is the wrong demonstration whereby um the paint is too thin, it's too diluted and too wet. Okay, so it becomes like a water color translucent kind of effect here. Okay, so key points, control your brush, the different effects, the brushes that can uh, create, okay, and the consistency and thickness and wetness of the paints itself. So, okay, once you have completed these two sections of this worksheet, you can uh, let it dry take a photo of it and um, submit for assessment all right before we move on to the next worksheet all right so first of all we're going to start off with the red color in the color wheel and over here um, I have picked up a red okay from the color set and squeezed it in the uh, smaller reservoirs in the center of the palette okay about um, maybe you can squeeze a little bit more we get about one ten cent size uh, block of paint in the center reservoir over here Right, um, so uh, we can pick out any red if you, uh, that you like from the color set, it doesn't matter because this time around we are not mixing our own secondary colors, we are going to uh, get the paints straight out of the tubes. Um, so, uh, for, the f for the first part of the color wheel, it should be re relatively easy, we are going to just paint the first base color okay, on the color wheel here. So there's no need to mix any um, colors yet. So I'm going to use a um, round tip brush, okay, because there are um, very fine edges here in the center of this uh, this, uh, this section. Uh, you can either use a uh, size 12 or size 8. Um, I will probably be using the size 8 over here. Uh, so same thing, I'm going to wet the brush, pick up some paints, 
and paint away. Okay, so um, I would usually start by painting all the um, edges. Okay, control just like when you're doing uh, coloring books when you are younger. Okay, yeah, you usually paint or color the edges so that you don't go out of line. Okay, so um, I'm not trying to restrict you to um, be creative or artistically um, restrict you, but um, over here we're trying to um, practice and train yourself to be um, in control of the brushes. Okay, after after that you want to paint any um, ch technically challenging pieces, it'll be easy for you. Okay, so we can use the round tip brush as per mentioned previously. Um, use the round tip brush to paint the edges very nicely. Okay, just control and paint it within this pie itself. Okay, um, sometimes we in class we call it a slice of pizza, right? Okay, so over here, same thing. This slice of pizza, I'm going to paint the edges very, very closely so that there's nothing that's popping out of the line so that your entire color wheel can be um, very neat. Okay, so after we paint the edges, then you can fill in the rest of the larger areas in the center. Okay, so control your brush. Control the amount of paint that you have on the brush. So what we're trying to achieve here is to paint this entire area with one solid uniform color. Okay, so the whole slice of red here should be nicely solid. Okay, you can probably even um, aim to cover out the printed words red here because um, okay, if you can see if it's thick enough because um, acrylic paints are um, opaque so you can actually cover up whatever is printed on the paper if you're painting thick enough okay, so we've covered all the edges okay you can continue to fill out the entire space with your brown tape brush or if you want it to be a little bit, a little bit faster uh, you can switch to a flat tape brush because it covers a larger surface area so i'm going to pick out some paints using the flat tip brush okay i'm going to let my brown tip brush rest there okay so you can pick up relatively um, large amount of paint on the flat tip brush and you can brush it within the contours that you have already established with your brown tip brush and this flat tip brush can help you paint more evenly to get an even coat of paint on the paper so that the colors the tones everything will be more evenly spread out as well so that this whole slice of red will be nice and solid okay so if you can see the word red is more or less covered and blocked out already by the pins so there you have it we have the first part of the color wheel completed okay so if you want you can touch up a little bit as a finishing touch you can Go over one more time to ensure the entire space is more evenly painted. Okay, great. Now moving on, I'm going to rinse off my brushes. Okay, moving on, we are going to move on to the second ring of your um, color wheel here. So which it, over here it says add white, right? Okay, so uh, we can take the tube of white paint. Okay, same thing, we are going to squeeze the white paint onto the center reservoir here which is the smaller ones okay not too much uh, we try not to squeeze out too much paints uh, at one go because acrylic paints tend to dry uh, rather quickly and once it's dried you cannot reactivate it with water okay once acrylic paints are dried it is water resistant so you cannot uh, reactivate whatever paints that have uh, been squeezed out and dried out okay so if you can see the white paint is here now, uh, when we are mixing colors, um, we will consider how strong each color is, okay, and decide how much to take from, uh, how much of each paint to take. So over here, between white and red, obviously the red color, okay, paint will be stronger than the white. So um, I would use my uh, rinsed brush, and uh, after 
um, dabbing it dry I will pick out the, the weaker color first okay which is white okay and this is what the larger reservoirs outside are for okay pick out the white paint okay and then uh, if you want you can re rinse the brush first before you pick out the red paint um, but uh, sometimes since the red is so strong uh, you might not re really need to rinse the brush before you pick out the red paint but let's play safe here okay I've already rinsed the brush okay so with a clean brush we'll pick up just a little bit okay because red is stronger than the white okay so we don't need as much uh, amount of red paint to mix with the white okay in any case we'll just put it into the larger, larger reservoir and then we'll mix together with the white okay so you get a tint of red so we'll mix it evenly first within this larger reservoir before we paint okay so some of you might prefer to have a thicker uh, or darker shade uh, dark, darker pink okay maybe this is too light for you then you can go back and take out more red paint and put it back into the reservoir so it's slightly darker now but it's still, it is still lighter than the base red we started off with okay so once you have mixed this amount of paint try not to spread it too much within the reservoir itself because once it spreads so thin the paint uh, will dry very 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 quickly so maybe try to mix in a smaller area within the larger reservoir okay so once, once you've gotten a, a tint of red that you like okay set the palette down then we can paint it within the second ring of your color wheel under red okay so same thing now that we're using the flat, uh, round tip brush paint the edges nicely and carefully Okay, so remember I'm still using um, only three fingers to control the paintbrush so that your brush strokes are more nimble and more flexible okay so over here a little bit more okay if you need to turn the paper okay for better access to the edges you, of course you can turn the paper around So this um, this size eight brush is rather um, large for this size for this area. So more or less, by the time I finish covering all the edges, uh, the entire space is already filled up. So we might not need to have uh, to use the flat tip brush here. Okay, so strive to paint neatly to show the control of your painting skills okay so see the entire um, tint area of the red is done right of course if you want to be a little bit more perfect you can go back to use your since we have more paint here anyway okay you can go back to take pick up your flat tip brush and then brush across the entire area to make it more even even out the entire tone and so uh, if you have noticed even though this color is very light okay it's a tint of red which is um, like a pink color you can see the words okay the wordings are also covered up that uh, add white in brackets is gone okay so you should have your base color red and after adding white to red you get the tint of it so this is like a pinkish color okay so that brings us to the outermost ring whereby you need to add black color to the base red color okay so same thing i'm going to rinse my brush okay the brushes are rinsed and now back to the palette we have Still have the red, the white is more or less used up. So now 
we need to squeeze out the black paint. Onto the center, one of the center reservoirs. Now paint, uh, same thing about how strong the color is. Black is very, very, very strong. So we don't have to squeeze out so much. It's just a, very, a, a smaller blob. Okay, less than half the blob of red that you actually squeezed out earlier on. So uh, your paints of uh, your 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 paints are come in front of very small tubes. So let's not waste them. Um, so just squeeze out a little bit. You can squeeze out more if you need. Okay. So same thing. Now um, back to the strength of the colors. Now we have we're going to mix red with black to get the shade. Okay. So which is a stronger color? Okay. Consider that. And I would decide that black will definitely be a stronger color. So instead of taking black first, I'm going to take pick up the weaker colors first, which is red in this case. Okay, as uh, deferred from just now what we did. Okay, just now we picked up red first. Okay, because oh uh, sorry, just now we picked up white first because white was the weaker color compared to red. Now, between red and black, the red is a weaker color. So I will pick up the red first. Okay, you can pick up quite a bit. Okay, since uh, this is the last part of the red that we're going to use, you can pick up more of the red. And then, uh, since black is so strong, I may not want to rinse my brush. There's no need to. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up just a little bit of black. Okay, just in case it gets too dark. Just a little bit of black first. Like that. Okay, then I'm just going to mix it within the larger reservoir and see how it goes. Okay. Okay, not enough black. So, let's... Uh, get the excess of the excess paint of the brush first before I pick up more black okay something like that then okay it should be significantly darker than your base red color already uh, one thing to note uh, is that acrylic paints tend to dry a little bit darker than it, it is when it is wet okay so mix it evenly you should get a brownish color and this will be a shade of red okay so once you're satisfied once the paint is evenly mixed you can start painting on the outermost ring of your color wheel for red okay let's assess paint here let me mix a little bit better okay so same thing using the round tip brush i'm going to paint neatly the contour and outline of this section okay so i'm spreading out the brush a little bit so that I can see the paint is even at the tip of the brush so that I can control how far the bristles go and make sure it, the bristles stay within the lines of this boundary of this section where we paint the shade of red Okay, if you find it a little bit challenging uh, to control such a big sized round tip brush, you can of course switch to if you still have the size 4 round tip brush that is a lot smaller and finer. So you can use it to paint the edges and the tips. Let's continue using size 8 to paint the edges. Up to you. So if you find that the thinner, finer brush works in your favor please change the brush that you're using to the final one so that you can control your edges better okay so same thing the painted edge here it's a curved edge so just watch the edge of the bristles touching the outline of this section and of course maintaining the thickness and wetness of the paint so that you can get clean edges as per what we practiced using your first worksheet earlier on okay so practice control over the thickness of your paints and of course the brush the whole reservoir is getting a little bit dry so I just added a little bit of water to the reservoir such that the paint can be wet enough to create clean edges okay, so 
Okay, so I just realized the uh, this outermost ring where we create shades is probably the largest surface area of each color. Okay, so you might, when you're mixing the color, the paints, you might want to create a larger amount of this shade so that it can last and cover the entire space here. Okay, so this shade is really dark so it shouldn't be a problem for you to cover up the words in the template itself that says add black in brackets okay so you can see that the labeling is gone already okay so watch closely when you're painting so there you have it we have the entire um, red color section on the color wheel done with adding white to the red okay which will call the base color and then black to red which is the base color okay so similarly if you still want to uh, make it even more perfect we can take out your flat tip brush okay take whatever remains of the shade okay then brush it through okay just very lightly brushing over the, and hover over the surface of the paper so that you don't press down too hard and, and then uh, ending up spreading out the paint too thinly then it will reveal the base uh, the, the, the paper that's underneath the paint itself so don't spread it out too much and just very very lightly brushing over okay so maintain the consistency in the tone okay so we have the base color red the tint of red color and the shade of red color Okay, so one, two, three parts of each color. So we're going to move on to the rest of the different colors. We have um, other primary colors, yellow and blue. Okay, and then the secondary colors, orange, green and violet. So we're just going to move on and paint to fill up the rest of the color wheel. So we're going to start with yellow. Um, if, if the water in your container is too dirty, okay and then you're going to paint something so weak and light such as yellow you might want to consider uh, changing water so that your yellow later on doesn't get polluted by all the reddish water that you have in the water container so i'm going to check after i rinse in this container of color reddish color water I'm going to rinse it, rinse the brush, dry it on the cloth and see whether the water is um, tinted with red or not. So far I think it's, it looks, it seems okay. So I'll pick up the yellow color, the yellow paint using my um, round tip brush. Same thing, we're going to paint the edges first. Get it nice, um, nicely painted and defined using my round tip brush, which has a very sharp tip, so that I can paint the edges and the corners of the slice of color here. Okay, so paint the edges neatly. Even if the yellow color is very light, okay, you will see that if you apply it thick enough, you should be opaque enough to cover up the printed wordings here, which says yellow. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more paint to finish off the edges here. Okay. So if you want to paint thick, okay, you can take out a little bit more paint just very lightly spread it across very lightly brush it across the surface of the paper so that you're not spreading the paint too thin and there you go you can cover up the wording if you need to 
if you want to okay so even though this is a very light color yellow you can still use the paints um, quality of being opaque and thick to cover up whatever is underneath cover up the word yellow okay so we have it here yellow and we're going to move on to add white okay so um, looking at the palette here you notice that just now the reservoir in the center there that was used to contain white color uh, it's not polluted okay because just now we used a clean brush so it would seem that that was a good decision to have cleaned your brush um, before you pick out the paints but we might need more so I'm going to squeeze out more white paint in the center reservoir here okay just a little bit more so let's uh, apply our knowledge of uh, the strength of each color again so between yellow and white um, white is definitely the weaker color so I'm going to use my brush to pick out the white and using another large reservoir in the center here I mean it's not center on the sides here okay before we pick up okay I'm going to raise my brush before I pick up the rest uh, of the yellow okay so I'm going to mix it together to get a tint of yellow very nice thin layer okay so um, my consideration right now is that since this color is so light if we want to cover up the wordings we might need more paint okay so probably I'm gonna take a little bit more um, paint to mix a little bit more of this tint so we're gonna need more white okay just a little bit more pick up more white okay put it here and rinse my brush because I'm going to use the yellow again later on for the shade so I will try my best not to pollute it rinse my brush pick up more yellow paint a little bit more and then we'll mix it again so that we can get a substantial amount of tint light yellow to cover this area okay so if you're satisfied with this tint okay set down the palette and we're going to paint Okay, here we can see that the um, the wordings are covered. You can paint it thickly so that you can cover the words. Okay, so to show that you are uh, painting the correct way or using acrylic paints, all the weird wordings should preferably be covered up by the paints. So I should not be able to see or read the words underneath this layer of paint. Okay, so the words at white in brackets are covered. Okay. No more oops. No more at white. Okay. So other than that, we are going to um, next use the black to create the shade of yellow. Okay, so we still have a bit of black here in the center reservoir. Uh, and as per mentioned, black is very very strong, uh, so we might not need to have more black paint squeezed out from it. But now between the black and yellow, yellow is the weaker one, so I'm gonna pick up the yellow. Okay, so remember the last part of the color wheel. This part at black for the shades is a relatively large area, so you might want to mix more paint to create the shade. So I'm gonna take out more yellow paint okay so let's pick up more yellow paint 
and put it inside the large reservoir on the sides okay so rinse the brush okay pick up some black okay and then mix oh okay you see the black just a little bit of black can make a very big difference so luckily I didn't pick up too much black okay this is already rather dark okay so I'm quite satisfied with this shade of yellow I'm gonna set down the palette and paint it'd be good for you to mix enough paints for this so that you don't have to remix and recreate another batch of the color or the paint because it might not be easy to get back the same shade Just turn the paper around so it's easier to paint the up here. Yeah? Okay, so because this is a shade, it's a darker tone. Um, then the base yellow it is so easy to just cover out the printed words in the background on the paper okay so there you go this is done and we have the shade of yellow here just by adding black so similarly if you want for it to be a little bit more perfect okay we can take the flat tip brush and brush it lightly across the entire space again to get a more even tone okay so since we have additional leftover paint let's just go over very lightly to get an even coat of paint have a nice finishing okay so there you have it we have red yellow the next primary color that we're going to work with will be blue okay but um, over here you can see that um, we have left two large reservoirs here so consider the space that you have on the palette so if I'm going to squeeze the blue out okay I can use the pure blue from here for the base color okay and then I can use two of the reservoirs to create the tints of blue and the shape of blue okay so i think we should have enough space here so i'm gonna move on and there's no need for us to wash the palette as yet okay so i'm gonna squeeze out the blue okay over here in the center reservoir then i'm going to just use the round tip brush size eight okay size eight brush so same thing try to rinse your brush and make sure that the water that comes off onto the cloth is not uh it's not colored not reddish not yellowish okay so pick up the base color blue and fill up the space here that's designated okay designated for blue color by now you should be familiar with the drill okay let's fill out and create clean edges of the section first Turn the paper if you need to have better access to the 
pictures. Okay, then we're done with this. Okay, so let's be a perfectionist and use a flat tip brush. Okay, to paint it. Go over another time to make it even. Okay, sometimes the thickness of the paint differs based on your brush stroke. So some parts are popping out, some parts are a little bit thinner and recessed. So Using the flat tip brush, I can make it all even. Okay, so we have three nice primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So now next we're going to do the tint. Okay, the tint of blue. So same thing going back to the reservoir, which is still pure and not polluted by other colors. I can put out more yellow, I mean more white paint on the reservoir in the reservoir. So from here, we can pick out and rinse the brushes. And so between blue and white, which is the stronger color. Yes, blue will be the stronger color. So I'm just going to pick out white first. Okay. Into the larger reservoir here. And rinse my brush. pick up the blue okay just uh, I think the blue is rather strong so I'm not going to take out too much blue um, maybe a slightly more okay so put in the reservoir here I'm gonna mix the blue and the white paint so try to mix and uh, contain your mixture in the center of the reservoir so that you don't spread it out too much uh, around the entire large reservoir then the paint will get very thin it's uh, more difficult for you to pick out the paints and the paint will dry faster as well. Okay, so make sure all the paints on the brush is utilized to get an even tint here. Okay, we're talking about tint here. Okay, so I'm satisfied with this tint for blue. And okay, let's just turn the paper around. Okay, so we can paint the tint area for the blue. So notice throughout I didn't like um, add water to the reservoir here. Basically the amount of water that is involved is just whatever is uh, available and absorbed by the brushes. Okay, so the paints should be wet enough to be mixed together. Without adding too much water. I didn't ask you to um, add water to the reservoir so that you can mix the colors or uh, mix the paints together so technically you don't really need to add water as long as your brushes are damp okay so okay so we have this section of the blue tint done 
and the Gore Vovista Fat Tip Brush again. Fat Tip Brush, Fat Tip Over. You get a nice coat, nice finishing, smooth and even, and definitely solid. Okay, there you go. You have the tint of blue, the blue tint here. Okay, so now left with the last part for this section we're going to use the black and blue together so blue will be the weaker one so i pick up the blue first okay so same thing this section will probably need quite a bit of paint so i'm going to take enough blue paint and it's my brush and pick out the black okay so black paint just a little bit just a little bit okay uh, then we're just going to mix them together Okay, is this dark enough? Maybe not Then we can pick up more black Okay mm, Can afford to go a little bit darker I guess Let's pick up more black Okay, since we're going to rinse this palette after this Because no more space in for the rest of the colours So I'm just going to I'm not rinsing my brush, so I'm just going to pick up more black directly without rinsing my brush. Okay, so I think this is a dark enough tone for the blue. Okay, so we're going to quickly paint over this section. That's inated for the shade of blue. Sometimes I have to hold my breath when painting so that the brush strokes don't go out of hand or out of line. So you might hear me gasping sometimes because I was holding my breath. Okay, dark enough. So now you've completed. The base color of all the primary colors red yellow and blue okay and respectively their tints and their shades okay in all these three rings of the color wheel there you go we have it we're done um of course if you uh, not forgetting trying to be the perfect artist here okay put in using your flat tip brush to brush across to make it nice and even okay and we are done okay so the um, color wheel for the three primary colors red yellow blue and their respective tints pink and maroon or maybe brown and then like yellow and this army look army green looking thing uh, the shade of yellow we have the base blue, the tint of it, and the um, shade of it. So as you can see just now, when I was mixing the shade for blue, it really didn't look so dark. Okay, so now after it's kind of dried a little bit, it get it has gotten relatively dark. It's almost like black. Okay, so do take note, uh, when acrylic paints dry, they tend to dry looking darker than it was when it was wet. 
Okay, so for now, uh, before we proceed on with the secondary colors, green, orange, and violet, uh, my palette has run out of uh, has run out of space. So I'm gonna go do one round of clean out. Uh, clean out your palette. Clean, get your water replaced with clean water, and then we'll continue with the rest of the colors. Okay, now we are back with a clean palette and a set of uh, a bucket of clean water. Um, so please do not leave your brushes lying inside the container like that, okay, for too long, because once you, are, you leave it, leave them in the bucket, the water container for too long, uh, when your brushes are rested in the water container like that, after a while, all the bristles will be, um, uh, will get out of shape and get distorted, and then uh, you'll be considered damaged. Then you need to get new brushes. Okay, so set the brushes out here. Okay. Uh, you are just lean them against the uh, cloth that I have here. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a challenge here. Okay, so if you refer and take a look at your set of your pins, there is one secondary color that is not available straight out of the tube here. So we will need to mix our own secondary color here. When what color will that be? Okay, if you see, we do not have an orange color that is straight out of the tube. Okay, um, but thankfully, orange color is uh, very easy to mix. Okay, so in order to get orange, we will need to mix yellow with red. Okay, so um, remember, we need to use this orange color that we're going to create in the base color here. And then we need to add white to it to get a tint of orange. And then we need to add black to get the shade of orange. So when we are mixing this uh, and creating this orange color, we will probably need to mix quite, uh, we need to produce quite uh, a, a big amount of this orange color that we're going to use. So um, without further ado, we're going to squeeze out some yellow paint here. Okay. And then some red paint here in the center. So same thing, the red is a stronger color than yellow. Um, you probably not need so much of the red. Okay, so um, we're going to mix these two. I'll pick up the yellow first and then the red. Okay, so we're going to rinse first before we pick up the red just a little bit red is very very strong so we try not to get to create such a um, reddish orange color so we don't need so much of the red so once you mix them together you should get something like that a very uh, yolky kind of orange so maybe you want to get a little bit more red up to you okay that's your own preference on what kind of orange you want but nothing too close to yellow, nothing too close to red. Okay, so we have this base orange that we can work with. So here we go, I'm going to paint this orange here. Okay, so orange being the secondary color that can be created with what we have just done with red and yellow. This orange position is in between red and yellow. Just try to make this um, color wheel as accurate and neat as possible. Later on for your project, you probably need to refer to your own color wheel uh, for the for color theory. Okay, so the position of them uh, of the colors are very important um, for color theory, so that you know um, that, for example, for com complementary colors, they're situated directly opposite each other. So over here we can already see a pair of complementary colors created, which are um, which is uh, orange and blue. Okay. Okay, this pair of complementary colors, orange and blue. So we're done with that, using the flat tape brush, make it even. Okay, so we have the base orange. Let's see if we can color, cover up the words. Orange. Okay, 
thereabouts. Then we're going to mix this with white. Okay, so you should have enough orange. So taking the orange that you created, okay, pick out some of the orange into the larger reservoir, pick out some white, and you should get a tint of orange that you can paint here. As light as this orange tint is, um, the paint should be thick enough still to cover up the wordings. Okay, remember the add white words in uh, brackets. They should be covered by the paint itself. Okay, there you go. Um, let's cover up a little bit more of the wordings. And then you can use your flat tip brush. Pick up the rest of the light blue, a uh, light um, orange, a tint of the orange, to do the finishing coat uh, and brushing up and polishing. Okay, so there you have it, the tint of orange, and we are left with the black. Okay, to create the shade of orange so hopefully in your base orange that you created there's still enough okay so we're going to use the base orange and add black so there is our black paint Oops. okay black paint in the center reservoir here okay we're going to pick out some bit of the orange paint Put them here okay and then um, rinse the brush okay we want to save the black for the rest of the shades of the violet and green later on so let's not pollute the black okay so pick up a little bit of the black very strong color but we have very little orange color so let's not pick up too much of the black Okay, so maybe this is enough. Yeah. Just a little bit more maybe. Okay, so let's have an even dark orange. So why do we need to learn to mix all this? Okay, in recognizing the tints and shades of the colors that can be created um, by adding white or black to the base colors, which we can call hues. Okay, hue, H, U, E. Okay, the hue, which is the base color here. Okay, you can know what you need to add when you're painting and how to achieve the colors that you want. So over here, can see that this orange when added with black gives you this very earthy tone that you might be able to use it for painting the earth um, on the floor on the ground um, deserts or mountains or cliffs or just basically sand sand color okay okay so we have 
the shade of orange. So same thing, rest by flat tip brush. Okay, using your flat tip brush, pick up the rest of the, the remaining amount of the paint and brush it over. Okay, so we have orange, tint of orange, shade of orange. Now moving on to other um, secondary colors. Let's try green. Okay, between between the, these two remaining secondary colors, green and purple, I will probably start with green first because I think purple, um, this violet is still stronger than the green. So I'm going to start with green first. Okay, so squeezing it in the reservoir in the center here. Maybe I can start it a bit more. So please take note of how much paint you squeeze out. Do not waste the paint. Okay, so I'm going to start off painting the base color here, which is the next secondary color, green. Okay, so green actually can be achieved by mixing blue and yellow. So the green will be positioned in between the blue and the yellow. Use the very fine tip of the round tip brushes to paint the, the corners of all these slices of pizzas. So in this slice of green, use the very sharp tip to carefully paint and fill in the edges at the center here, where all the pieces and slices of pizza meet in the center. Okay, so this green is rel uh, relatively dark. Um, for those who are using the other set of paints, please don't use the uh, super light green. Later I'll show you. I know the Omni set of acrylic paints, there's a very light uh, lime green kind of uh, color. Okay, we try to not use that. Use the We can use the darker one. The lime green one will be too yellowish in the sense. So let's fill this out with this green. So you can see that um, this green seems to be rather patchy. Okay, you can see that it's quite patchy here, here and there because um, this is a very dark color. Okay, which means the inconsistency in the thickness of the paint will create this patchiness. So it should be very nice and thick so that the um, the, the color will turn out very even. So, um, what I'm going to do is, or what you can do is, okay, in order to get a very even and solid coat of this base green, you can use the flat tip brush. Since we have already outlined and uh, defined the contours of this green section, okay, use the flat tip brush, okay, to very lightly coat another layer of paint over so that these tones become nice, solid and even. So very, very lightly just brush and stroke this layer of paint across okay, on the surface of the paper. So you can go multiple layers, multiple coats to make it even. Okay, so don't press too hard. Once you press too hard, okay, when I press too hard, you see when I spread out the, the paint too thinly, Okay, the paper underneath your review. Okay, so I'm going to put in back another coat of paint so that it's nice and even. So try your best to make it even like that. Okay, so don't press 
there's really no need to press you just you're basically just spreading a, a layer of paint over the surface of the of the um, paper okay so I think on camera it looks very dark okay so this is a very dark green but don't worry we will be able to probably see the nature of this green color when we create this um, tint of the green so using the um, white color okay sorry just now I think this white was a little bit polluted by the orange I didn't rinse my brush earlier on but it should be fine uh, now we have more white paint we are going to create the light green okay which is the tint of the base green that we had okay so the weaker color first remember always remember the weaker color first rinse the brush pick out the base color green Okay, the, the green is also is quite strong so maybe you don't need so much of it okay just a little bit so you can see white and green maybe just a little bit more green like that. then we can mix the very nice um pepperminty kind of color okay so this is our green uh, tint of the green so we're going to add it in here in these sections okay so now you can see the nature of this green Of painted okay so now maybe this is a good chance to let you know okay so I just accidentally painted out of line uh, because yellow was painted uh, earlier on the yellow is more or less um, dried already so now the green layer has gone over line okay what you can do is now that the yellow is more or less dried the yellow should be quite water resistant and then while the green paint is still wet so use a clean wet brush you actually can try to take the green away okay so because the yellow has already dried it is not uh, it is it's not going to mix with the green so by diluting the green paint with water you actually can wipe it off okay so just a quick cleanup just a quick cleanup okay so that so you see now the paint the green is not over the line anymore because I just cleaned it up okay because the yellow has already dried and it's water resistant So the tint of green is done, nicely done, and there's still quite a bit of um, light green left here. Which going to take your um, flat tip brush, pick up the remaining paint, and do a polishing sweep over. It should be nice and even okay so that's we're left with the shade of green so I usually will mix the colors with the round tip brush is easier and so we'll get the green into the reservoir here okay before we take the black which is a stronger color remember I think this green was already rather dark so by adding black it should be really dark almost black okay so you might want to add okay since it's the last mixture that I'm gonna have use the green more to create a very very dark green it, I won't be surprised if it turns out looking just pure black maybe almost like the, the dark blue over here okay so doesn't matter um, you will actually be interested to see 
how both the shades okay on their on their own will look black but when you put them side by side like that later on you should be able to see um, the difference between the two blacks okay the two blacks they are actually not both black okay they are just very dark shades of the respective colors blue and green Higher area with the dark green, the shade of green. This definitely can cover up the wordings perfectly. I don't think you can ever see the words again underneath this. Underneath this coat of dark green, the shade of green. Almost done. Just the edges here. Okay, done. Same thing, we're going to use the flat tip brush to go over very lightly. Okay, so remember this dark colors, don't brush them too hard. If you press them too hard, it will make the coat of paint very thin. Then you review the white paper underneath, then it's going to be patchy. So we're done with green, now left with the violet. Um, as I was saying, the other set of acrylic paint, um, try to use this darker green instead of this light green. Okay, this darker green, this light green is a little bit too light, too yellowish. But uh, even if you do use the light green, uh, there's nothing really wrong about that, so don't worry about it. So now we're down with violet. Okay, violet is also another color that looks rather dark um, if you are using this set okay, of paints you will need to mix your own purple colour or violet by mixing red and um, blue okay? so if you don't have a tube of purple like this from this set of um, acrylic paints you will need to mix the red and blue to get your violet okay. so um, I'm not left with a lot of reservoirs here I'm just going to squeeze out the purple in the center reservoir, the smaller one, and start painting away our last color on our color wheel, and which is our third secondary color. Okay. Um, if you're mixing your own violet using blue and red, uh, don't be surprised or don't be too disappointed if the uh, um, violet turns out to be more brownish, or more like a, um, what do you call that? A maroon color. That's fine because it's the nature of the two red and blue that you have in the set. Uh, it is not going to come out with a perfectly purplish looking violet when you mix the, this two paints together. So don't worry about it. Okay, but if you have this tube of purple, it will be good straight from the tube you get a nice purple if not you it should be an interesting experience for you to be mixing your own secondary colors also using the red and blue okay so uh, which is why this violet is in between okay on the color wheel in between red and blue on the color wheel because those are the two primary colors that should get you violet spinning the whole paper around 
just to get the right angle to paint the edges Okay, so same thing, you see this um, this violet is a rather dark color. If you don't spread it evenly, you will see that the, the paint you get will look very patchy. So very lightly, don't, don't have to use much pressure at all. Just very lightly brush this coat of paint over the surface of the paper to maintain the consistency in the thickness of this paint. And as a result, the tones the tonal value of this paint, as you can see visually, should be consistent and more uniform throughout the entire space here. Okay, so now we're done with that. We are going to create the sheet, uh, the tint. Okay, the tint of this violet, uh, which I'm going to get more white paint here. Um, this is now I'm left with this reservoir. Okay, so this is uh, talking about your palette management. Okay, so left with this space and this space. So I'm just gonna use this space for the tints because um, it's a smaller area, so I don't need so much paint. So I'm just gonna get the white. Okay, and then add on the violet into this small space here. Yeah. It's still possible to mix don't worry and there you go you have a very nice lilac color which is a tint of this violet that you have been painting for the base color okay so this lilac color very nice mix it evenly and then you can add into this space Okay, so it's all done. Same thing. Leftover paints can be used to polish up the entire area. Uh, just make sure my brush is cleaned. Okay, leftover. Gonna paint it over very lightly. And make it even with my flat tip brush. Nicely done. Okay, last but not least, we are going to add black to this vi uh, this violet. Violet. Violet and black. Okay, so you should get a nice deep purple, like a brin draw color. And we add it to this space reserved for the last color we're going to paint, which is the shade of the violet. Before we finish off the entire color wheel.
Okay, so the same thing is happening. Uh, so you see that um, this this shade of purple, this shade of violet is very dark and you don't have enough paint to make it thick and solid. So you see it starts to get very, very patchy. Then when I add a little bit more water, it becomes watercolory and too thin. So it's just going to get a little bit more violet with the black. Okay, just add, mixing a little bit more for us to work with. Okay. So there you have it. We are done with our color wheel in acrylic paints. Okay, so let's uh, just do a recap. We have done firstly the red, yellow, and the blue, which are primary colors. Okay, and of course their respective tints by adding white and black. Okay, which, which will give us the shade of the base color. Okay, so all these base colors in the innermost ring, we call them hues. Okay, H U E S. So, uh, in other words, I like to call them the base colors. Okay, so we'll, we work with the base colors, then we add in white to get the tints, and add black to get the shades. Okay, so um, please set your worksheet aside to let it dry. Uh, so once it's dried, you should get the final look of the colors. Um, then you can take a photo of. Um, the entire worksheet, please do remember to write down your name, register number, class and the date today. Right. So once you're done, uh, once this piece is dried, you can take a photo of this together with the first exercise. Okay. I should receive okay, the photo submission of both of these worksheets. Okay, worksheet 1, worksheet 2. And I look forward to your submission online. Thank you very much.